Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we are installing the eTrailer.com Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on a 2019 Dodge Journey. So one of the things you'll first notice while looking at the hitch installed is the fact that it is an exposed cross tube, which simply means that you can actually see the hitch portion hanging down below the fascia. And overall, it does look pretty good with its nice black powder coat finish, and that's going to keep it nice and sturdy and robust and also hold up to the weather over time. Another thing you're going to notice is the two inch by two inch trailer hitch receiver opening. And this is going to be great for a number of different accessories. Your two inch by two inch is the most common for your bike racks, cargo carriers, ball mounts, whatever it may be. So this is really going to open it up to what you can do. It also has a nice reinforced collar. So that's going to give it a little bit of extra rigidity. On bottom here, you're going to see a plate style safety chain loops, and that's going to be great for hooking up your standard hooks or even a larger clevis style can fit pretty easily on here. So that's going to be good when you are towing your trailer. Another thing you're going to want to look at is the actual hitch pin hole. And the hitch pin and clip does not actually come with the hitch. But this is going to be a 5 8 And so a lot of your accessories, when you pick them up, they'll actually come with pin and clips. But if you wanted to get a locking one, and that way you can lock this in place, have your accessories on here, and make sure that they don't walk away in the hands of someone else, we actually have locking ones available here at eTrailer. Taking a look at the actual weight specs of what this can handle, it's got a decent amount of capacity. So your gross trailer weight rating, it's gonna be the weight of the trailer plus your accessories loaded up. That's gonna be 4,000 pounds. Now your tongue weight rating is going to be 400 pounds, and that's just gonna be the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So some of your suspended uh, accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks, that's the amount of weight that this is gonna be holding up. Now this can be used with weight distribution, but the numbers are gonna stay exactly the same. It's also important, you're gonna to wanna to check the owner's manual to see what the vehicle is capable of towing and compare it with the actual hitch numbers. Take the lower of those two, and that way you're gonna stay safe. Now we're gonna get some measurements here. So starting off, we'll go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point on the rear fascia. It's gonna put us about three and a half inches. And that's important to note for your fold up accessories, uh, just to make sure that they're not gonna make contact with your rear fascia when they're in the stored position. Now another one we'll check is gonna be our ground clearance. Now from the inside of the receiver tube opening to the ground, we're looking at 14 inches. So overall, that's a decent amount of ground clearance. You're not really gonna have to worry about your hitch making contact, but if you do have some accessories on here, it's gonna extend the length of the vehicle. And as it goes up a incline, they can actually make contact with the ground. 14 inches, you shouldn't have to worry too much, but also something to keep in mind when you do have your accessories loaded up. Now, if you are getting a hitch to really open up to what you can actually do with your vehicle, one of the things that people kind of worry about is going to be the installation. Well, I'm here to tell you it's pretty straightforward on this one. You can definitely do it in your garage or on your driveway. And I'm going to be here every step of the way to make sure that you get it installed. So let's take a look at that. Now, to begin our installation, we're going to be dropping down our mufflers by removing the exhaust isolators. And the reason being is the hitch is actually going to bolt up in the frame rail right kind of where the muffler sits. So to gain access to that, we're going to need to drop that down. But before we do that, we're going to want to support our exhaust because once we take the exhaust hangers off here, it's actually going to kind of lean down and put a lot of stress on the rest of the exhaust. So if you're doing this in your garage or on your driveway, I recommend getting a block of wood or something to put underneath the exhaust to support it, but also allow you to kind of move it as necessary to gain some more space. What I'm doing here is going to be using a cam buckle strap. You can simply just put it onto the end links or some suspension component that's gonna be solid. And we're really just gonna to wanna to create a cradle for that exhaust for when we drop it down to make sure that it's not gonna just kind of hang there unsupported. So there's going to be a total of four isolators that we're going to need to remove. Uh, you'll see one on each side of each muffler. So you can pry on the bottom or the top, whichever one works best. But a helpful tip, these are kind of tricky at times. They don't want to budge off of that, especially if they've sat there for a bit. So putting a little bit of penetrating oil, just kind of where we're going to be prying is going to help lubricate that rubber to make it slide off quite a bit easier. Once you've sprayed that down, you can actually just take your pry bar, find a nice little fulcrum point here, and then just, it should slide off with a little bit of uh, persuasion by the pr uh, pry bar. And if you don't have a pry bar, you can use a long handle uh, flathead screwdriver and use it in the same method that I'm doing here. With our first one removed, we'll go ahead and do the same process on the other three. So now we're going to need to grab our carriage bolts 
as well as our spacer blocks. Now there's gonna be two different styles. In fact, there's three different styles. You have the smaller one here. There's gonna be a larger one. There's also a wedge one, um, and that's pretty easy to determine. So for this one, we're gonna be using the small ones. And what we're gonna be doing is pretty much getting our bolt and our spacer block to sit in here, and that's gonna create a stud allowing us to actually mount our hitch up. So what we're gonna do here is uh, we're going to feed our fish wire through and so what you're going to do pretty easy here you're going to just take your coiled end and run this back and starting at this one's going to be it's going to make it a lot easier rather than having to pass over so i suggest doing the middle one once you have the coiled end through we're going to just take our spacer block feed that over we can just set this up in this little gap here and then we're going to just take our carriage bolt and thread it onto our coiled end here and then pulling the other end of the wire, we'll just kind of move this along. You can feed the carriage bolt in like that. And just with some minor jostling, we should be able to get this to drop in. Now, we only have two fish wires and we're gonna be doing this technique um, actually again on the other side as well as one over here. So I'm gonna just uncoil this for now and so we can reuse it. So we have this one in. We're gonna do the same exact thing on this one. It should be pretty easy. So with these two in place, we're gonna go ahead and use the same technique to get our carriage bolt into this one. Now, we are gonna be using the large spacer block for this. So what we're gonna do is feed our coiled end over here, and that's gonna be the whole of our um, bumper support there. So we'll go ahead, we'll get our large spacer block slid up into the frame. And then the coiled end, same thing. We'll just do the same technique that we did before. And there we are. So now we're just gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side of the vehicle. So now we're gonna get ready to raise our hitch up in place. Um, so you're gonna to want to grab an extra set of hands, but I do recommend with our two fish wires, what I'm gonna do is on the furthest studs towards the front of the vehicle, I'm gonna actually coil, put our coil on here. And the reason being is when you put your hitch in place, if this pushes up in the frame, you'll have to retrieve that. This one is right here, so it should be pretty easy. Same with this one, it'll be easy to access. So putting them on these back ones, is just gonna give us a little bit of insurance to make sure that we don't have to actually fish them out. So with our wedge, we're gonna put this in place here, and it's going to go in between the actual hitch and the bumper support with that flat portion on the hitch and this wedge facing towards the front. So when we put this in place, just kind of have a finger ready to make sure um, it's actually in the proper orientation, but really we're just gonna need to pass that bolt through and get a few threads on, and that's gonna hold our hitch up and allow us to get the rest of this in place. Now, something else we're gonna wanna do as we lift it up, this fish wire that we had, we can feed that in that back hole and pull that as we go up. It's gonna kinda help align it as well. So just make sure before you tighten anything down or uh, as you hand thread, just make sure you have enough space to make sure that this is properly orientated. So feed your fish wire through. And we're gonna kinda just slide it over the muffler. And so you can see I have my hand on our wedge here. In fact, you can kind of feed that up if that makes it a little bit easier. And then we'll just kind of get that stud to feed through here. So if you're having trouble raising this up in place, our plug here is actually making slight contact with it, allowing it to kind of just stop it from going all the way up on our threads. So if you need to actually remove the plug here, you can use a trim panel tool here or a uh, flathead. We're gonna just pry this off right now, um, going kind of underneath the plug. It should just kind of pop out with a plastic clip here. And that's gonna just allow us to have that extra space. And we can probably put it back later or just re-zip it, re-zip tie it to a secure location. So just be careful prying it out. Just get underneath the plug. There we go. 
So with a little, pers little persuasion, we can get that out. We'll just kind of push it off to the side and that's gonna allow us to get our hitch actually now raised up. So now I'm gonna just hand tighten the nut here um, and that's gonna hold that side up in place for us. <laughs> so now with both, of, both sides actually holding itself up, we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of the nuts on here. And we're gonna just kinda need to align our studs here to where we can push our hitch up, getting those threads in, and we'll hand tighten these as well. So let's get those all mounted up. We're gonna go back with the three quarter inch socket and we're just gonna tighten these down. Now we don't have to get too crazy here because we're gonna go back with our torque wrench and get them to the proper torque setting. But you wanna make sure that it's all snug and kind of working your way around. Um, something you wanna keep in mind is as you're tightening, that wedge can actually move around. So if you need to, you can put a little screwdriver to wedge it, but just kind of check the orientation as you're tightening it down to make sure that it's where it needs to be. So now we have everything tightened down. We're gonna go back with our torque wrench, that same socket, and we're gonna just use the torque settings that are in the instruction manual. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we actually have these here at E-Trailer. You can generally rent them at an auto parts store. Um, this is something that's pretty important because it's gonna make sure that it's not too tight, putting stress on the threads, but also it's not gonna become loose over time. So let's go ahead and we'll torque all of these down. So now with everything torqued down properly, we're gonna go ahead and get our exhaust isolators back up. So you may need to actually lift the muffler up. And I'm gonna actually use my cam buckle strap to hold this in place as I raise it up. Then we'll just slide these back on. Now with this one on, I'll go ahead and get the rest of them on as well we can remove our strap or whatever support device you have. And you can go ahead and make sure that electrical plug is in a good spot. It's gonna probably not go back in that factory, but you can go ahead and just zip tie that up to a few other factory lines and that's gonna keep it protected. But other than that, we're ready to use our hitch. And that was a look and installation of the E-Trailer Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on a 2019 Dodge Journey.